Now, it would be remiss of me to not mention Leonhard Euler uh, and the bridges of Konigsberg problem um, when we're doing graph theory. Okay? Um, Euler, uh, you'll see his name pop up all over the shop in mathematics. Um, one of the people that popularized uh, E, uh, the number E, and uh, gave it its letter. Um, You've also got uh, Euler's identity, uh, does lots of things in pure mathematics. So you might be a bit surprised that he'd also come up here. Um, he was a Swiss mathematician, um, really ha was able to do so much and furthered our understanding of mathematics. And graph theory, um, he was the one that really started the ball rolling, okay, on looking at graph theory as a standalone topic. Now, the Bridges of Konigsberg problem um, is really where it all stemmed from. So, the legend goes that there was a uh, essentially a competition um, where in the city of Konigsberg, and you can look it up on Wikipedia and see uh, see where it where it was um, and what happened to it. Um, the city of Konigsberg has a river that is running through it. And there are these two land masses. Okay, there's this island here, and there's this separate bit of land here in the middle. And either side of the river is these other land masses. And joining up these land masses are seven bridges. Now, otherwise, and this is often referred to as the seven bridges of Konigsberg. Now, the competition was that you could start on any one of the four land masses. So we've got one, two, three, four. And what you needed to do was you needed to go over each bridge and visit every land mass. But you could only go over a bridge once, and you had to go over every bridge. So. You might want to pause the video. If you've never looked at this problem before, you might want to pause the video and see if you can actually trace it out, see if you can actually solve the problem. Okay. Now, what Euler did was he took this problem and turned it into a graph. So because you've got four land masses, you can represent those land masses by four vertices. Okay, so this is the first dot, then you've got second dot, third dot, and this one is the fourth dot. And then you can join them up you, and representing, so the edges of your graph represent the bridges. So this one is matched to this one twice because there are these two bridges here. So one, two, and then this island is attached to this uh, landmass by two bridges. This island is uh, attached to this one by a bridge, and this one connects to the other two as well. Okay. So what the problem becomes is can you start at one of the vertices and try and redraw this diagram without taking your pen from the page? Now. Another similar problem to this, uh, which you may have met previously, is the drawing of a house. Okay, so something like this. Okay, and what you need to do is you need to draw the house, and you're trying to do it without taking your pen off the page. Okay, now. What you want to try and do is see if you can draw that from each of and start from each of the other vertices. Okay? So try and draw that in the same way that I did, but you need to start at each of the different vertices. And I want you to check on what happens. Okay? See what happens when you try and do it that way. Now, the eagle eyed among you might have seen where I started. I started in the bottom left, and I actually ended up in the bottom right. Okay, so let's just try that again. So here we go. One, two, three, 
four, five. So I started here. Okay, this is where I start. So I initially went up that way, but I could go in a different way. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not sure if this is exactly the same way as I did it. And you can see I'm finishing over here. Okay. So what I'm going to try and now do is I'm now going to try and start over here. Okay. You might want to predict where you think I'm going to finish. So uh, I'm going to go this way this time. You can see I'm finishing over here. So I start over here and I finish over here. Now if you've had a go at this, you may, you'll find that you cannot do this if you start any of the other three vertices. You cannot draw it all in one go. Now what you want to think about is what is the difference between these vertices and these ones? What's making those two special? Okay. Now, looking at your four, sorry, your five vertices. Okay, your five vertices in total. This one has order two. This one has order four. This one has order four. This one has order three. This one has order three. So the two vertices that you can start from have odd order, and this graph is referred to as semi. Eulerian because it has precisely two odd vertices. Essentially what it allows you to do is it allows you to escape from one, okay, and then you've dealt with that one edge. And what then happens, okay, is it turns it into a graph that now has Two, two, four, four, two, and turns it into what's referred to as an Eulerian graph. So an Eulerian graph has all even order. Okay, all vertices have even order. And once you have an Eulerian graph, you can start at any vertex and draw your graph. So let's say. I'm trying to draw this graph now. Okay, that's got two and that's got two. So I'm going to start up here this time. So here we go. Okay, and I've drawn it. And you'll notice I started and finished at the same point. So when it's an Eulerian graph, you start and finish at the same point, And you can draw it. If it is semi-Eulerian, okay, the way that you start is you start from one of the odd vertices, okay, and once you have gone and taken out that one, and you've gone along that one, you now have every vertex has even order, and that means that you can then trace out the shape and you return to that point. So you'll always return to the opposite one. Okay, the other odd vert vertex. So a semi-Eulerian graph requires you to have precisely two odd vertices. It doesn't work with more. So this is Eulerian. This is semi-Eulerian. Okay? So when you come to this graph, the Bridges of Konigsberg problem, this has order three. This has order 5, this has order 3, and this has order 3. So they all have odd order. It is not Eulerian, it is not semi-Eulerian. So that means that you cannot trace this out without lifting your pen off the page. So Euler was the person that showed that this problem could not be solved. Okay, so that was the Bridges of Konigsberg problem. And Euler really popularised graph theory and showed its usefulness.